So let's talk about commissars, commanders, and one very angry Katachan death machine. Is Guardsman Marbo trying to survive on a battlefield full of alien horrors? Or are those alien horrors trying to survive on a battlefield with him? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about the mortal heroes of the Imperial Guard and talking through every Guard character's leaked stats from the new Imperial Guard Codex. I thought in this one we'd do a bit of a roundup of the characters and the buffs they're likely to be giving to your Guard forces, and we'll go through the HQ choices first and the Elite's choices after that. I might just stop off to talk about a few of the heroes that don't seem to be quite making it into the book though. Compared with quite a lot of codexes, it looks like we have lost a fair few character data sheets, including gaining a few. Before we get into the main subject of the video though, I thought I might just quickly talk about the Guard Launch Box giveaway that's going to be the December giveaway for the channel. Once a month on All Specs Tactics, we do a big giveaway. The one for November was the big one for the Night Households, that's going to be announced on the 4th, but with the Guard Codex around the corner, I thought that the one for December could be the Launch Box, the one with the new Cadian Command Squad, 20 Shock Troops, 2 Field Ordnance Batteries, the new Sentinel, and the Codex and Data Cards. Obviously this one isn't released yet, but it looks like it's going to be sometime pretty imminent. If the giveaway happens before the box comes out, then I'll just be posting it just as soon as I get it. I have a feel like the end of November looks pretty likely for it though. As normal for these giveaways, there's two equal ways to enter, links down in the video description. You can support the channel on Patreon for any amount, it is what allows me to keep on making these videos all that much, or you can support on social media which is completely free. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page, and then you actually enter the draw on the 1st of December. Reply to the giveaway comment that appears on that day, with a photo of any miniature with your name and the date handwritten within the photo. The last bit is just to ward off Facebook bots and spammers, which have been a bit of a problem before. Then all the Facebook and Patreon members are entered equally, the draw is done with a random number generator, and announced on the channel update video of the 4th of the month. The Manart one's going to be announced on the 4th of November, and the Guard one will be the 4th of December. Feel free to check out those giveaway links down in the video description, and of course there'll be further giveaways on the channel each month. Back into the subject of today's video though, let's talk about some guard characters. As per the last week or two, this is all based on the big leaks codex that Mordian Glory published on his channel. Old playtester rules, so there's likely going to be a few things that's changed from this draft to the final codex, but the majority of the stat line changes and abilities should be accurate. I do recommend checking out Mordian Glory's channel, excellent guard content, and he's going to be making some super valuable videos before and after the codex drops. I'll link it down in the video description. Moving on to the characters though, first up I thought we'd have a quick word for the characters that appear to be lost, these datasheets don't seem to be making it into the new Astra Militarum Codex, and there's rather a lot of them. We had heard these rumours before, but Yarrick appears to be gone, an icon who is in fine cast, and they don't seem to sell his miniature anymore, though I must admit it does seem like an odd decision to let go of one of their most iconic heroes, maybe they'll give him a plastic kit at some stage. Otherwise, perhaps less surprising is Creed and Kel to be gone, Creed is captured and Kel is dead. Ursula Creed is basically the update for Creed's model, taking up her father's mantle. Knight Commander Pask appears to be gone alongside his model. He's basically just going to be fielded as a standard tank commander now, I guess. The Lord Commissar doesn't appear to have a standard data sheet either. Looks like he's just going to be an elite's choice character from now on, fielded as the standard commissar. And rather a lot of data sheets have all been compressed into the command squad as well the standard commanders and regimental advisors. The commanders are part of the command squad and the regimental advisors are all optional add-ons to the squad rather than independent roaming characters. The Cadian Castellan does go some way to filling that senior officer independent niche though. He is basically the same as the company commander was before, kind of. Two orders and fieldable independently of a squad. Overall, a bit of a shake-up. I feel like the biggest loss out of any of these was Yarrick as he doesn't really seem to be getting a direct replacement. I feel like most of the rest are just kind of fieldable in different ways really. I'm sure some people though won't necessarily appreciate the change, say for example not being able to fill out HQ slots with commissars if desired. Let's get into the actual data sheets though, and first up we have the Ursula Creed data sheet, an HQ choice for 90 points, and she comes with a standard officer's profile, but 5 wounds and 5 attacks, a 4 plus save and a 5 plus invul, and like her father before her is basically a senior officer on steroids. Her damage stats aren't exactly why you field her, but it looks like she's got a couple of pistol shots at strength 5, AP minus 3, and damage 2, duty and burden, the names for creased pistols. A power sword as well, though it looks like that's only damage 1 and isn't particularly exciting. Really, it's the orders and things that are going to be the main reason to field her. She gets three regimental orders. Going to be very nice to have in the middle of an infantry battle line, 
Looks like she'd pair well with things like heavy weapon squads or Kazakin maybe. And it looks like she has a unique special order of her own that gives a plus one strength to ranged attacks for infantry. That does seem potentially quite tasty, say for example getting strength for hotshot las guns. On top of that, she seems to have a similar ability to the Eldar Autark, allowing you to use the CPV roll twice within the same phase. That one's maybe a little bit less value, I feel. Just being able to double up on spending your CP that way maybe doesn't seem the best. And she also has the reroll ones to hit for core units within 6 inches buff. That one seems to be fairly standard to the senior officers. Overall, looks like she's going to be competing with the Cadian Castellan. The Castellan is just the 45 points, and honestly I'm not 100% sure whether 45 points will be enough to really justify these buffs. I guess that plus one strength order does seem really quite nice though. Just for a quick recap on the guard orders, seeing as we're going to be talking about them quite a bit, there's two types of orders for infantry characters, there's the infantry ones and the perfectors ones for commissars. The standard ones are regimental ones and can be issued to anything with the platoon keyword apparently. Perhaps standouts from the list are first rank, second rank, making las guns heavy three, an extra damage punch at long range, and take aim that gives you plus one to hit, and an extra AP at range as well. Two very, very nice buffs for infantry units could have Kazakin or heavy weapons hitting extra hard. Otherwise, you've got take cover to get some light cover, and if you're in light, you gain dense. Move, move, move for a little bit of extra movement, though not quite as much as you have previously. Fix bayonets for if you absolutely have to melee. And suppression fire, an interesting one to give an enemy infantry unit a minus one to hit. Fairly potent, I think take aim in particular looks like it'll be a staple. I'd say that literally every single one of the others though does look very usable. We'll cover the Prefectus ones a bit more when we get to the Commissar. Otherwise though, and looking like perhaps the most generic guard HQ now, is the Cadian Castellan. He's an HQ choice for 45 points, and he looks like essentially the new company commander. I suspect that he is going to get the Cadian keyword if it is in the name of the datasheet. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. It could mean that he might have less good synergy with things like Kazachan or other units in the list maybe. It does basically look like he's an upgraded version of the old company commander, though you can still technically field a company commander within the command squad. His stat line is maybe pretty similar to the old company commander, it's just gained a plus one wound and plus one attack. He still does two orders, and he has gained a captain style reroll aura, every core unit within six inches reroll wants to hit. Could be nice for heavy weapons and sentinels, and particularly for anything with a plasma gun. Weapons wise, he gets a last pistol and chainsaw at base. The upgrades are as per the model, Games Workshop has given him a lot of options. Most of it's free, so I guess he's normally going to be picking up a power sword instead of the chain sword. The only ones that cost points are apparently the plasma pistol and the power fist, both of which are an extra five. If the final data sheet allows you to take a power sword and bolt gun together, that might be a reasonable combo. Looks like he's going to be a staple HQ to be honest, really quite cheap, gets you two orders and a reroll bubble. For just 45 points, I imagine that's going to be pretty tempting. Next up, we've got the Primaris Psyker. He's an HQ choice for 60 points, plus 10 from the 50 from the previous codex, but he has gained an extra cast for that. The stat line and the stave seem entirely unchanged, has a little bit of combat threat but not much, and as well as casting two powers, he also knows smite and two powers from the guard discipline. Really, his strength is going to be ties to how good those powers are. I feel like the new Psycana discipline has had a bit of a side grade, maybe. Some good ones are worse, where some bad ones are a lot better. In particular, Psychic Barrier is going to be less good for things like Russes with their 2 plus armor saves. Now it's a 5 plus invul rather than a plus 1 to their saving throw. Going through them, Terrifying Visions is a leadership debuff, a bit situational perhaps. Gaze of the Emperor is a beam attack that I still don't think is particularly great. Psychic Barrier, the 5 plus invul save, looks a lot more useful for infantry now, though it might be a bit limited if conscripts really are gone, as then you'll have to just apply it to a 10 strong infantry squad at max. I feel like Night Shroud might be perhaps the very best of the bunch. This one means that you can't be hit on a 1 to 3 against one unit within 12 inches, so you could apply that to something important like a battle tank perhaps. That one is quite a decent survivability boost in Warhammer 40k at the moment, and I feel like that one could be a staple. Otherwise, Mental Shackles gives you a minus 2 inch to your move, advance and charge. That could actually be a funny one when paired with a Death Strike missile perhaps. It might stop you from being able to get out of the way of it. Otherwise, though, maybe a bit limited as he has to be quite close to the unit in question. Finally, Psychic Maelstrom is a 18 inch cast. He roll 1d6 per model in a unit for the closest one within 18 inches. For each 5 plus, he deal a mortal wound up to a max of 6. It's good against the Vite Army, that one, but it's kind of situational. If you're playing something like Knights, it's going to be entirely worthless. But if you are playing an enemy with a bunch of 10 man squads, that's going to be very efficient with an average of over 3 mortal wounds per cast. 
Overall, I think my predictable favourites might be Nightshard and Psychic Barrier, depending on what it is you're trying to buff. He can always fall back on Smite if he does want to do a bit of Witch Firing. Next up, we have the Command Squad, which is a big and complex unit now, with an awful lot going on. It appears that there's two different datasheets for the Standard Command Squad, a Cadian Command Squad and a Platoon Command Squad, both of which are 80 points, and it looks like the main difference between them is just literally a few war gear options, which in all honesty might be a bit tricky to unravel until we've got the full datasheet, as I feel like going off leaks for the fine print is maybe just going to be a bit of a bad idea. In any case though, they're both 80 points at base, they come with the commander baked in now, and they have four models otherwise. The commander seems to have a similar stat line to the previous company commander, and it does look like the squad is an HQ choice, even if it's called the platoon command squad. He basically has similar options to the Castellan, the Power Fist and the Plasma Pistol are both 5 point upgrades, but he only gets a single order where the Castellan gets 2. The Veteran Guardsmen are now only Ballistic Skill 4+, plus, but get 2 attacks, a bit of a downgrade if you wanted to Special Weapon Spam, but it does sound like you can get some okay firepower choices on a Command Squad that now has Character Keyword Protection, and it means that it's not going to be able to be directly shot. I think as changes go, that one's a particularly nice one for this unit, as otherwise when you had command squads, they'd basically just be the easiest thing to remove for the enemy entirely. Just ignore the base troops and shoot the command squad dead, they basically weren't any harder to kill. Interestingly, for the veteran guardsmen, it looks like they're always going to be tooled up to the max. There's three specialist upgrades in a medic, platoon standard, and a master vox, plus a bunch of special and heavy weapon options. You can literally choose any war gear out of the bunch of it for free. But I guess the main trade-off is that you only have four models to play with. If you're fielding all the upgrades like the banner and things, then you're not getting extra special weapons with that. For the specialist upgrades, it looks like the medic gives the squad a 5 plus feel no pain, a small but meaningful survivability boost, and they also have the medic keyword, which looks like they've got a stratagem for reviving guardsmen somehow. The regimental standard grants a reroll to wound aura within 6 inches. That could be quite nice on core units when paired with a castellan. Reroll wants to hit and wound passively for guard on top of orders. The Master Vox, I seem to have managed to leave it off the slide, but that allows you to broadcast orders out to other Voxcaster squads within 24 inches, so it means that this squad could stay quite safely behind the lines and still be ordering people about. It looks like the Guardsman's weapon options might be the main thing that differentiates the Cadian from the standard Platoon squad options. Just off these leaks, it looks like the Platoon squad just has a lot more options. The ability is to equip the standard Guardsman with chain swords the option to make a couple of guardsmen into a heavy weapon squad, and the option to take more free res unrestricted special weapons, though apparently you can only have one of each of the special weapons now, even if you can equip one guardsman with each one of them. I'm going to guess that there'll be at least some advantage of fielding an actual Cadian command squad as opposed to the platoon one, though I think that we'll have to wait for the codex to see the advantages in a bit more detail. It doesn't end there though for the command squads, as well as getting all those specialist bits of kit, you also have the option to add the advisors to the unit, and it sounds like you can attach either an Ogrim bodyguard or Nork, and then any or all of the individual advisors, though only one copy of each. It means that a command squad really could be a very big meaty unit with a lot of points in it, and it could be doing quite a lot for your army if you want it. The Ogrim bodyguard is really quite a big point sink, but he's really tough. 55 points for a much improved stat line, his strength 6 and toughness 5 at base, a big 6 wounds, 5 attacks, and minus 1 damage which Ogren are getting all the way around apparently. He has a special rule like the Traitor Guardsman Ogren from the recent Kill Team datasheets where any hits that attack the unit hit him first, so he can make the unit just a little bit more tanky compared with all these fairly fragile Guardsmen. As for weapons, it does seem like the Ogren ones have been glowed up quite a bit. The Ripper Gun is now Assault 3 and 18 inch range, Strength 5, AP 2 and damage 2, and it also grants an extra AP minus 1 and damage 1 in melee. That's quite nice, the profile before was very underwhelming, it looks like these are pretty brutal now. If he takes the huge knife as well, then the strength is a strength user, AP minus 2 and damage 2, and gets plus 1 attack, so again that's fairly threatening, with 5 attacks going on there. It still looks like he can take all the Borgrin options, the plates for a 4 plus save, a 2 plus slab shield save, or a 4 plus brute shield, each of those is 5 points. Nork's in a pretty similar vein, he's got weapon skill 2+, ballistic skill 3+, 7 wounds, 6 attacks, and apparently wound rolls of 6 do 1 mortal wound, 15 points over the standard model, and to be honest, those upgrades do look like they could be worth it, if you do want a tanky and dangerous guy for your squad. Looks like he gets a knife and a ripper gun. I'm not really sure how much they'll be worth it though, compared with just relying on character protection to keep the squad safe, and just try not to expose them to enemy fire in the first place. It does seem like it's quite a big expense when you're spending almost as much of the squad it's worth itself in a bit of protection if the enemy just happens to catch it up in melee. 
Otherwise, for the other advisors, the astropath is 40 points, and it looks like he can cast and deny one power. He's got a special power or psychic action that he can use to farm one CP on a warp charge 7 cast, and he can smite normally now. If he was a bit cheaper, I'd say that'd be almost borderline auto includes, and still 40 points for an average of around 3 CP over the game certainly isn't bad. Maybe a bit take or leave, perhaps. Apparently he does lose his ignores cover debuff, which is a bit sad. Otherwise, it looks like the Officer of the Fleet and the Master of the Ordnance work very similarly. They're 30 points each, apparently. Their powers are that they both nominate a unit that's visible to them, and then either planes or artillery, respectively, all get to reroll ones to hit against that target. Realistically, that's just so much more valuable for the Master of Ordnance than the Officer of the Fleet. Being able to nominate that for a whole bunch of artillery to come down on seems great. It's maybe just a little bit limited on scope, though, if you have to be able to see your targets. It looks like they both get a unique stratagem as well. The Officer of the Fleet has one that's currently unknown, but sounds like some way to interfere with enemy reserves. And the Master of the Ordnance has a bombardment-type stratagem, one of those ones where you put a marker on the board and then the enemy all has to run out of the way or they take mortal wounds. Overall, it's fairly interesting stuff. Even if you just took a bare bones command squad with the regimental standard for re-rolls and a single order, that does look like it could be an interesting alternative to Acadian Castellan. You are paying an extra 35 points more, but you get a bunch of character protected special weapons or a heavy weapon team along with that, and they do seem like they could contribute quite a bit to the game while the squad's doing its buffing. Having a master box around does seem kind of nice as well, for ordering around units that might be venturing a bit further afield. The Scion command squad is in a fairly similar vein to the rest, it's 110 points, including the Tempestor now. They get the character keyword, but they're very unlikely to be core for any rerolls or things, though. They largely get the same sort of stats as the Command Squad, except with Scion Ballistic Skill of 3+, and it looks like their army-wide buff of 6s to hit generate an additional hit. They have their 4-plus armor and deep strike as well, so do they get quite a lot of significant advantages. The Tempestor appears to have picked himself up a 5-plus Invul Refractor Field, and he can only issue orders to Scions, as you'd probably expect. First rank, second rank on hot shots looks quite interesting, as does take aim for hitting on twos and AP minus three if the leaks are right. For upgrades, the command rod is apparently plus five points, which allows the bearer to know Perfector's orders as well as the regimental ones. Again, he can only apply those to the silent squads that is ordering, and there are a few interesting ones as we'll get on to. Otherwise, it looks like the special weapons are kind of similar to the platoon command squad. You can take them for free, but you can only take one of each. The hot shot body gun is 30 inch and rapid fire two, Strength 4, AP-2, and Damage 1, and the Master Vox, Standard, and Medic all appear to be the same. Looks interesting, still looks like they'll buff Scions in a very potent way as well. The Regimental Standard looks like it could be a good one when dropping alongside some big juiced up Scion squads, and then ordering them to take aim, or first rank, second rank. Moving on to a couple of special characters, and first up we have Iron Hand Strachan. If these leagues are right, this guy is looking very threatening indeed. A 70 point Kaschan character, where previously he was 80. Broadly speaking, he seems improved quite a bit, though he has lost that extra attack aura that he had, which was quite popular for making melee guard work better. His stat line was already very impressive for a guardsman previously, but it seems to have got even better. He's still strength 6 and toughness 4 with a 3 plus save, but he's now got 5 wounds and 6 attacks, which really is quite impressive. He does have a stat line that's basically kind of equivalent to a space marine character, if not slightly better than some of the more basic ones. His bionic arm looks like it's going to be striking at strength 6 now, AP-3 and damage 2, quite a big boost on the AP side of things there. And the automatic shotgun is now 3 shots at damage 2, so better strength than damage there. Then on top of a fairly punchy stat line, he's got a fair few buffs. He's got the senior officer aura of reroll ones like the Castellan, 2 regimental orders, and when you issue an order, 6s to hit auto wound in melee against non-vehicles as well. That's as an addition, not just a standard. That's still a pretty potent buff, to be honest, and it would help Guardsman punch up against other targets. He personally gets his Been There, Seen It, Killed It rule, which allows him to reroll wounds against monsters, and that's not too bad when he's got 6 attacks at damage 2 and decent AP. Overall, he looks like he's Acadian Castellan for Castachans, with some much improved combat stats, plus some interesting melee buffs as well. Seems kind of popular if the Castachan keyword doesn't come with too many drawbacks. Gaunt's Ghosts are a unit that didn't really seem to get that many leaks compared with the rest. They are confirmed to be in the Codex, and are a bit cheaper at 130 points apparently. Mr. Morty and Glory's leaks just said that they're basically the same as they were before. Apparently they've fixed the slightly ambiguous wording that might let Bragg do an infinite damage loop with his grenades. And I'd guess that as Gaunt is a Commissar, he's probably going to be able to gain access to the Perfectus orders. 
so they should have a bit more command abilities than they have at the moment. They could still be a very fun unit if they have that rule where they just can't be shot outside of 18 inches, could make them safe as backfield objective holders. I feel like they maybe are a slightly confused unit though, a bit of shooting and a bit of melee. Really quite a fun and themed choice, but I'm not sure how often they'd be fielded in terms of competitive options, where they're maybe just doing a little bit of everything and it's not really clear exactly what their main role should be. Next up we have the trusty tank commander, certainly a competitive staple of ever since the guard book came out. Tank commanders were generally just an improved version of the Russ as they hit on threes. Now it does seem that the main thing that differentiates them is just getting access to a tank order and the character keyword for relics and things, and they don't get any native better shooting than the rest. It looks like they're 165 points base when you've accounted for the whole weapon which you have to pay for, so that would be 15 points over the standard Russ. It seems that otherwise they are basically an identical data sheet to the Lehman Russ. The turrets cost the same for every single variant, and the sponsons cost the same as the Ross's ones. The stat line also appears to be the exact same as well. The turret weapons still get to hit on threes due to the turret weapon special rule and fire out of combat. Apparently the tank order that they get will allow you to go out in a radius, and there are more of them than there were before. Here are the different stat lines for the various different Ross weapons. I did a bit of a comparison of the various different weapons on offer with the Lehman Ross versus Rogue or Dawn comparison video I made a couple of days back. I feel like the standout choices for the standard Ross might be the Battle Cannon, Demolisher, the Executioner and the Vanquisher. All of those put in some decent work against hard targets. The Executioner in particular is pretty standout against lots of targets, but does come with the risk of overheating to take some mortal wounds. The Vanquisher is also pretty terrifying as well, in an enormous shot with ignoring involves and an average of 10 damage. It does make the tank a bit monodimensional though, and if you're fighting an army that's almost entirely infantry, it might perhaps have limited value. Still looks like a terrifying sight to have on the other side of the table though. We used to have just three tank orders, but now there's six. I think most of them are handy enough, though Gunners kill on sight for reroll ones to hit does look like it could still be a staple. Extra damage is really a bad thing. Otherwise, there's a whole bunch of more situational ones for if they matter. If you've got a blast weapon targeting a relevant target, then you can count them as double for that. It could allow you max shots with something like a battle cannon, which could be nice. Full throttle gives you extra movement, and you get to counter stationary if you'd advanced as well. That could be a good one if you're struggling to gain line of sight and you just need an extra few inches to do so. Blitz them is if you want to try and run over enemies in combat for mortal wounds. Shock and awe can gain you obsec if it matters. And pinning fire can potentially slow down enemies with a minus two movement debuff. Again, that could be kind of fun if you are really wanting to try and hit something with a big death strike missile. Even just having the tank order for gunners kill on sight seems quite good, particularly if you could be affecting multiple different tanks like this. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they can affect super heavies as well because that could be pretty powerful. Lastly for the HQ units, we have Lord Solar Leontus, Mr. Snazzy new golden boy on a horse who was revealed yesterday, and 180 point cavalry supreme commander, with a fairly impressive stat line, strength 6 and toughness 4, 6 attacks, and a reasonable save with a 3 plus and a 4 plus inbuilt. As a supreme commander, it looks like he'll be really easy to field in a guard list, you should be able to field him command point and slot free essentially, and it looks like his buffs are going to be good enough to warrant that big price tag. He's got an aura of core units re-rolling ones to hit and wound, really quite nice in itself. He gives one unit four re-rolls to hit, which can be anything up to a big super heavy, which is pretty crazy. And if he happens to target a core unit with that buff, they get re-rolls to wound as well, which is even better. He knows three orders, including all three order variants, so if you wanted him as an alternative to a tank commander maybe, then that would be quite good as well. I can't help but think it's a kind of fun idea to have him galloping alongside tanks and ordering them about, as well as being a counter-charge threat if the enemy gets close. Perhaps he might be better off leading the Rough Riders though, if they do have as scary stats as it looks like they do. Those re-rolls plus the extra re-rolls to wound could make them incredibly scary. He does have an ability to allow him to swap out a secondary or gain an additional CP, depending on which one makes sense. I treat that as a normal CP most of the time, but if you manage to counter your opponent with something clever, Maybe it could net you some additional victory points. And finally he gets a pistol called Soul's Righteous Gaze, two shots at strength 8 and a damage 3, and the Conquest Sword that gives him strength 6, AP 3 and damage 2. Maybe he'll get the rumoured Rough Riders boost as well for an extra plus 2 strength on the charge. Overall I feel like he is looking pretty tempting for an 180 point HQ. His melee isn't going to be punching up with the Space Marine Commanders or more than Val or anything, but his buffs seem really quite good and being able to basically solo a squad of elite infantry does seem pretty nice. I think people are maybe a bit divided on his model. I must admit I do quite like his snazzy bionic steed though. 
Moving on to the Elite section, and we have the man, the myth, the legend, who is Sly Marbo himself. Feel free to mash the keyboard with the letter A if you appreciate. As well as having the important role of perhaps the greatest meme of the Imperial Guard, Sly Marbo does seem like he's a lot more vicious in this iteration of him. Previously he was 60 points and his rules were basically worse, now he's only 50 and he's a lot more of a threat. Guardsman Marbo hits on 2s, his strength 4 and toughness 3, gets a big 5 wounds and 5 attacks, both of which are 1 extra on their previous and a 5 plus save. Not from armour presumably, presumably that's just the layers of muscle that you have to shoot through to actually hurt him. Both his Ripper Pistol and Envenom Blade are both a lot nastier than they were before. The Ripper Pistol gives you 3 shots at strength 5, AP 2 and damage 2. It no longer wounds infantries on a 2+, plus, but it does ignore Lookout Sir and deals mortal wounds on 6s, and it is actually a surprisingly potent sniper. The Envenomed Blade is strength plus 2, AP minus 2 and damage 2 versus non-vehicles, and hitting on 2s with a strength of 6, that really isn't too bad at all for a 50 point model. It does look like if he gets a chance to shoot and fight against most standard infantry squads, he will be taking a big chunk out of them for the points that he costs. He can't be a warlord as might be expected, but he can deep strike and he rerolls charges when he does so. It does mean that it would still be quite a risky long charge if he does pop up from nowhere though, less than a 50% chance of getting in, which would be a bit sad if he failed. He might be better served as a bit more of a lurking threat within the lines, unless there is some way of making him make a longer charge. When he does fight, if he survives the fight phase, he can opt to go into reserve at the end of the fight phase once per game. That could make him pretty hard to deal with, and it's a really good option to use if he's just been bullying an enemy infantry squad, then he's out in the open and is just about to get removed with no difficulty whatsoever. You may as well put him back and strike him down again. Finally, it looks like he's got some fun mortal wound stratagems for rigging the battlefield full of traps. He's got a melter mine which allows you to do a stratagem in the fight phase. You swap out his regular attacks versus vehicles for a single attack. If it hits, then it's damage D3 plus 1 against vehicles, but on a 6, it's damage 2 D3. Perhaps not super standout, but still that could quite reliably finish off a damaged vehicle perhaps. Otherwise, it does also help out the vicious trap stratagem. There's a few different things that make that one better, including having Guardsman Marbo on the board, plus being Katachan, plus having a Melter Mine keyword. It means that if the enemy charges him and he's in cover, then he can roll a dice and on a 3+, plus, they'll be taking 2d3 mortal wounds, which is kind of hilarious. To be honest, that alone could be kind of worth it. Against some targets, 2d3 mortal wounds is going to be more than 50 points. Overall, it looks like really quite a fun and disruptive threat for 50 points. I'm still not necessarily sure he's going to be top tier competitive at that cost, he is very fragile after all if the opponent gets to hit him first, but if you want to use him for a bit of fun thrown into a list, then it's both very cheap and surprisingly threatening for that cost. Sticking with the cast chance, we have Gunnery Sergeant Harkonnex. He's 50 points as well, as it seems that basically all of the Guard Elite support characters are now. He moves 6, hits on 3s, has a big strength 5 and toughness 4, and has a 5 plus feel no pain to make him a bit more survivable. He can chip away each turn with that Relic Heavy Bolter payback, 3 shots at strength 5, AP minus 2 and damage 2, and also assault weapon as well so he can move and shoot it. If you're using Kastachan Jungle Fighters, which I believe is the specific datasheet, and not just the Kastachan keyword in general, then it looks like you can issue an order to them, so he could be kind of in a way a different sort of officer that you could use for those, and one that can chip in with quite a powerful gun each turn as well. On top of that, it looks like you get to nominate one Jungle Fighters datasheet as Harker's Hellraisers, getting re-rolls to hit both in melee and in shooting. Perhaps might depend on just how efficient the Kastachan Jungle Fighters datasheet is in the first place maybe. If they are an optimal infantry choice, then he'll be good. If they're not, then probably not. Otherwise, we're finishing up with three more generic elite slot support characters. The Tech Priest Engine Seer is 50 points now, so plus 15 from before. Not really too different stat line wise, he has gained Ballistic Skill 3 plus, and he has the same weapons as he had before with an axe and a servo arm attack. He still heals vehicles for D3 wounds each turn, which is nice enough, though I must admit you'd have to be doing that for several turns in a row to really justify himself. And on top of that, apparently he also grants one vehicle a 5 plus inball save each turn, which is kind of interesting, but a lot of vehicles have gained quite a lot on the saves. If they do keep the Armour of Contempt special rule, then it means that that inball save just isn't actually going to matter the vast majority of the time. I feel like whether or not Guard keep that special rule might really determine as to how good this guy is, I feel like for 50 points just for the healing is a bit lacklustre unless he's got any special relics or things that might help him. Otherwise, I guess, you might be protecting Rosses or Rogue or Dawns against things like Melters at AP-4, which isn't too bad. The Preacher has changed a bit and also gone up in points to 50 apparently. His stat line is broadly similar and still gets to re-roll his own hits in melee, 
For weapons, it looks like he gets a chainsaw at base, but we can buy a power more for 5 points, giving him strength plus 3 and AP minus 1. Still not very standout though. Overall, I feel like he's probably got worse to be honest. He used to have a flat attacks aura where he gained plus 1 attack for infantry units within 6 inches, so it's quite a nice one to put alongside Strachan with some cast chans or perhaps some Bulgrins maybe. Now though, it looks like he's got a chaplain style litany that seems to just target the 1 unit. In the command phase, it goes off on a 3+, and he gets to choose either one of two effects, a 6 plus invul and ignore maledictions, and also reroll hits in melee and a plus one to charge. I guess the first one will at least give him something to do before any squads make it to combat, so he could do that early in the game maybe. The second one seems a little bit lacklustre on standard guardsmen, even if they are cast chans or buffed up in some way, but actually it does seem like it could be a very interesting one if it can still apply to Bulgrin and things, Rerolling hits will be pretty massive on those, and the plus one to charge doesn't hurt either. Overall, it might be that he just keeps on having the roll that he does at the moment, no longer having the attacks aura at base, now potentially having an even better buff, but having to roll for it could make it a lot more less reliable. Finally, last but by no means least, is the thoroughly iconic Guard Commissar. As mentioned, it does look like he is now the only version that you can take of him. It doesn't look like the Lord Commissar exists anymore, but this guy has been upgraded quite decently. He's now 40 points rather than the 25 that he was before, at least now he's got some useful buffs rather than the pretty lacklustre stuff that he had for leadership previously. Plus apparently he can be filled as slotless as well if an officer is present in the same list, which I'm sure it pretty much always will be. Quite nice that he's not going to be fighting for your elite slots too much. Statline wise, it looks like he's gained a 5 plus inball save from a refractor field and a plus 1 wound, so he is a bit harder to kill than he was before, but still as a guard character, not super tough. The gear that he can take is a little bit more limited, he comes with the bolt pistol and chainsaw at standard, and can upgrade to plasma pistols and power swords for 5 points each. Both of them could be potentially interesting enough, maybe the power sword seeing as he has 3 attacks. Unfortunately it looks like he can't take the power fist anymore, that one was representative of a previous model that Games Workshop no longer sells, and it looks like it could be a victim of no model, no rules. His abilities do look just so much more useful than the previous Commissar though, He's gained a single Officio Prefectus order, which we'll get onto in just a second, and apparently he can order these to abhumans and officers as well as infantry, implying that the regimental orders won't be able to apply to abhumans or things. On top of that, his summary execution is now a actual decent leadership buff. If a squad within 6 inches of him fails a morale test, then you basically don't have to take a combat attrition check, you just have the one model that fails and goes away from the morale check failing, I guess that represents the guy getting blammed by the pistol. Pretty evocative, and how he operates, for at least one squad a turn, you'll take one casualty from morale, and no more than that. Finally, to take a look at his Prefector's orders, a few of them seem quite good. Get back in the fight has moved here, that's the one where you fall back and still get to shoot, and that one does seem pretty handy to have in the battle line, maybe particularly if you can order it through a Master Vox or something. We'd have to see the exact rules for how the Master Vox works in the Command Squad. That one now allows you to fall back and shoot, or fall back and charge, but not both. Could be kind of interesting falling back and charging for things like Borgrim perhaps. Otherwise, there's the new version of forwards for the Emperor. You get to advance or move and shoot without penalty. Potentially that could mean some heavy weapon squads or potentially even field ordnance batteries moving around the place. And that could be quite interesting to get some movement out of them, I guess, if you need some line of sight. At all costs can allow you to gain obsec. Again, that's super interesting on Auxilia. Borgrim are very tough, and if you gain them obsec as well, then that's going to be one objective that's hard to scrape off for your opponent. Quite like the idea for that one. Plus, if you're obsec already, you get plus one to the models. Duty and honor means that you can do actions even if you fell back or advanced and shot. Again, very, very nice that one. A good utility piece that you're not going to need all the time, but it seems pretty good that the commissar can just pick it up on the turn that you need it most. It means that an infantry squad can do an action like raise some banners on the center of the road and still blaze away with some last guns. Show them steel, show them contempt, gives you plus one leadership and a five plus save against mortal wounds. Again, maybe could be handy on a Bulgrin squad that's about to get hit by a bunch of them. It'll be tough against other things, but maybe mortal wounds like a Thousand Suns Psychic Phase could really ruin them if you didn't have this. Finally, Remain Vigilant is one that stops enemy deep strikes, and again, it's another fun one to flex into if you need it. If you're playing against some Gene Stealer Colts, then you could order this, and then they're not going to be dropping near to the squad that you've ordered. Overall, it really is quite a nice box of tricks. Not really as much direct damage dealing as the regimental orders, but I feel like if you do have a squad of Borgrin or Ogren advancing towards the enemy, and if they wind up being good, then maybe having a Commissar and perhaps a Minister or a Priest in tow 
could be quite a good tag team to have a whole load more options for making them into a unit that your opponent really doesn't want to deal with. So with Commissar said and done, that's a bit of a roundup of every single HQ in the Guard Codex, at least based on these interesting League's rules. From only impressions, I feel like most of it seems at least fairly useful depending on the squad that you're buffing. It kind of depends on what winds up being the strongest powerhouses of the Guard Codex, I think. From the leaks at the moment, I'd be guessing that maybe the tanks and perhaps Rough Riders are some of the biggest threats, so it might be units that are more like Tank Commanders or the Lord Solar who might be a bit better at ordering those around. I feel like Guard Lists are going to still have infantry in some capacity though, so you'll almost certainly want some regimental orders going for that, and the Commissar orders seem a lot more usable now. Glad to see that they've got more of a purpose. Otherwise, both Ironhand Strachan and Sly Marbo himself look really quite fun Kastachan characters. I feel like you could take those along pretty guilt-free if you were playing a Kastachan list. In any case, let me know what you think, which of these are looking the strongest at the moment in your opinion, and why. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular guard videos coming. I'm looking forward to getting a few more official previews from Games Workshop, and I will certainly review the new codex in full once we get it. Feel free to check the links out down in the video description as well for entering the giveaway if you'd like to. Both the links to the channel's Patreon page are below, or the Facebook page to look out for the post that appears on the 1st of December. I'll certainly be picking up one of those guard boxes myself. I think the thing I'm most looking forward to is the new book and those field ordnance batteries. They do seem like quite cool models. Otherwise, I'll just give a bit more of a shout out to the channel's Patreon as well. It is what allows me to make big long videos about 40k like this quite so regularly, so if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, and check out the link down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.